Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanted to talk to you about some of the productivity tips and tricks that I've kind of developed over the years when it comes to Outlook and uh, Microsoft Teams. So I've shown some of my friends in real life and they're, they're always like, oh wow, I didn't realize you could do that. That's gonna save me a lot of time. And so that's what I wanted to show you in this video. I thought I would touch on where I am filming from. I am in a hotel apartment uh, in Brisbane. I flew up from Adelaide to Brisbane this week to facilitate a leadership course called the Six Critical Practices of Leadership by Franklin Covey. As the name implies, the course goes through the six critical things that leaders should do on a regular basis in order to be a more effective leader. It's a fantastic course. I highly recommend it. If you are an HR professional and you're looking for a course to help leaders uh, who, who are new to leadership, they've just moved from an individual contributor role to a leadership role for the first time, I highly recommend the course. In terms of uh, today, it is actually a day off for me and uh, like the true psychopath that I am, I have woken up at 5.30 as I do most days. And I'm about to go for a run. I am training for the Nike Melbourne Marathon, which is coming up in October. And I'm really passionate about health and fitness. I personally think that HR professionals, uh, we can play more of a role when it comes to helping employees and leaders uh, when it comes to health and fitness. And so that's uh, something that I'm trying to kind of build into my content. And I'm also, uh, posting some of my workouts and, and how I'm doing things uh, from a health and fitness perspective on my Instagram. So if you are thinking about training or you're wanting to get back into exercise or you, you're wanting to do a marathon, I'm posting a lot of, of stuff on my Instagram. So I'll include a link in the description so you can check that out. So that's probably enough rambling from me. I'm going to head to the hotel gym and uh, do the workout that's been assigned for me. I downloaded a, or I, I found a, a really experienced runner uh, on Fiverr and he has written me a custom plan. And so now I just need to execute on the plan, which is uh, easier said than done. That workout was rough. I am dying. Okay, so let's talk about some productivity tips. I'm just kind of still putting myself back together after that workout. It was really tough. I normally do a lot of my own kind of programming and, and uh, write my own training programs, but uh, in preparation for this marathon, I outsourced my programming to a really experienced runner that I found on Fiverr. He's uh, been running longer than I've been alive and he's done something like 50 marathons. And so he wrote me a fully customized individual program based on my past performance and my goals and, and what I'm trying to do. I would really like to run the marathon in sub three hours. And so he's written me a bunch of workouts and this morning's workout was 20 kilometers aiming for one hour and 31 minutes, which I did, but I decided to do it on a treadmill and I haven't ran on a treadmill in a long time and it was absolutely woeful. I'm not super happy with the way things are looking at the moment, and I'm reading uh, one of Robert Greene's uh, books at the moment, which is called The Laws of Human Nature. And I'm probably gonna butcher this quote, but there's a, a concept in there called the pleasure principle, which basically states that as humans, we are kind of constantly seeking things that look nice and, and, and to an extent feel nice. And so we will recoil for things that don't really look that nice. And I'm not super happy with how this is looking. And, and I think those principles can be applied to corporate work. Uh, so whenever I'm making a PowerPoint presentation or a spreadsheet or a document, I really try to make sure that it looks pleasing so that people are more likely to, to pay attention. So if you just give me a few minutes, I'm just going to quickly rearrange and, and change the way that I'm filming this just so it looks a bit nicer. And then I will talk to you about how I use Outlook and Teams and some of the, the quick productivity tips that I'm hoping will help you to become more effective. So just, just give me a brief moment in time. It is but the work of a moment.
Okay, so uh, I've moved the, the whole room around. Uh, no, my, no major injuries, um, which is great. Uh, I personally think that this looks a lot better. Uh, everything that I have read in terms of YouTube and watched and courses that I've taken, they all advise to kind of shoot into an open kind of background or shoot into a corner. I've had the light here, which I think is, is quite nice. It's probably not ideal from a lighting perspective, but I think traveling with a tripod uh, and camera is probably extra enough. I'm not at the point where I'm gonna travel with the light as well, but I think it looks a lot, a lot nicer. But let's move right along. You're not here for uh, aesthetics. Let's talk about uh, some outlook and uh, team's tips in terms of productivity. Okay, so what I'd like to show you is I have an inbox here with one email in it. I find that whenever I'm facilitating courses on effectiveness or leadership, often people will talk about how they're kind of governed by their inbox and people want to move away from that. And that's something that I'm kind of personally working at as well. I don't want to have my actions and my day driven by my inbox. I want to, uh, you know, take uh, more regular breaks in terms of uh, looking at Outlook. So what I'm personally trying to do is I will close Outlook altogether and then I'll even go so far as to set a timer uh, for 45 minutes before I open it again. And I've been really surprised how quickly I kind of go to open it or go to look at Outlook again and it's only been seven minutes or something. I think it's a real problem for, for a lot of knowledge workers how, how much we are distracted by our inboxes. So. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at this one. So what I like to show people, let's just say I received this email and it's been sent to me and uh, it's something that I don't need action for a month or, or two weeks down the track and I want to get it out of my inbox. So what I like to do is I'll just uh, hit Windows left and then I'll bring up a calendar over here. This is a, a dummy calendar that I'm going to go through. My, my normal calendar does have a lot more in it than this. Uh, it would be nice to have a calendar like this. I am working at it though. And let's just say I want to work on that task, that email, but I don't want to do it for a couple of weeks. What I will do is I will go ahead and I will uh, jump forward two weeks and then I'll click here and I'll call this do that thing and I will jump in to that uh, invite and I'm going to hit Windows right key again. It always goes to the left for some reason. Let's press that way. And I'm going to drag this in to the invite. And so then what I will do is I will save and close that invite and the email is attached to it. So I know in the future I'm gonna be reminded to do that thing. What I can then do is go back into my inbox and delete this one and then I'm not distracted every time I look in my inbox. And for me, I really like to have as close to inbox zero as possible. I rarely get there. Uh, I kind of, I, I like to have uh, less than a, than a scroll full, to, to use a term um, that I've kind of come up with. So if I have more than a scroll full, if I have to scroll, scroll, scroll in my inbox, I, I know that I have to kind of get on top of things. But everyone is different in terms of how they manage it. That's just how I like to do things. So that is my first tip. Take your e emails, and if you don't need to action them for a while, create an invite in the future, drag them in, and then archive them or delete them, move them out of the way so you're not distracted by them. The next one I wanted to talk to you about is linked uh, to that, that one. Uh, let's have a look at uh, my calendar here. I'm going to maximize this screen. So I like to use different colors and I'm going to explain uh, how and, and why I use those. So whenever I'm booking something in my calendar, uh, if I'm booking an action, I will give it a red color and I'll, I'll show you why. Let's just have a look at this one here. Prepare for mid-year review. That's red and uh, prepare orientation slide pack. I've put that in, but I'm going to open this and I'm going to click on categorize and turn that to red, which is time box. So time boxing is a productivity concept where you take your to-do list and then you, as the name implies, you box the time to do it and it is a really, really effective and, and, and powerful way to increase your productivity. And I've, I've shown it to a lot of people and they're like, it makes a huge difference. And again, it's linked back to seven habits of, of highly effective people, that weekly planning. So you're planning in your calendar when you're going to do things. So I take it a little bit further and I like to uh, change things from red to black depending on whether I have done them or not. So let's just say on this Monday here as an example, I was able to prepare that orientation slide pack and I have a category there called 
worked on slash completed, so that turns it to black. But prepare for mid-year review. If I didn't work on that, I didn't complete it, then I will put it in again on the Tuesday. So you'll see that it's there as well. If on the Tuesday I'm able to work on it and complete it, then I will change it to black. For me, I find it is really a powerful way to, at a glance, be able to see how many things am I turning from red to black? Why is there a task that keeps on coming up for me that I have to continually schedule and I'm not doing it? What, why is that? And, and it's a really nice way to get like a visual representation of how, how productive you are being in the week. So that's the second one that I wanted to talk about. I also want to talk about my uh, note-taking workflow and how I handle meetings. I have, uh, I use an iPad Pro. This one is getting a bit dated. I am looking forward to upgrading. I am hearing rumors that there's going to be a new one coming out later this year. That would be super bueno. Uh, I have covered uh, the note-taking app in, that I use in detail in another video, which I'll put up here or here. I always forget where it's going to be, but you, you get the idea. And I use GoodNotes, and I'm going to show you how I, uh, how I structure things. So let's just have a look at my Thursday calendar there. We have a meeting invite, a one-on-one -on -one with Dave and George. I'm Dave. If you haven't seen, uh, I do have a series of other videos uh, where I have invented a fictional manager called George and I play the role of the HR manager and George plays uh, a fictional tongue-in-cheek manager. He has good intentions, but uh, he, he does the wrong things and so it gives me an opportunity to kind of showcase and, and share with people what it's like to be in HR because I often find that uh, there's, there's a lot of misinformation, there's a lot of myths about what it's like to be in HR and it's a really handy way to kind of, if you are an HR professional, to, to show your family members um, this is kind of, uh, it's a bit of a joke but this is kind of tongue in cheek of, of what can happen sometimes in, in, in HR organisations or HR work. Um, so make sure you check that one out. But I had digressed a little bit. Let's go back to the one-on-one -on -one with Dave and George. Uh, let's just say I had a meeting with him and I'm going to write in here, Dave and George one-on-one. -on -one. And let's just say I'm taking some notes in the meeting and uh, let's just say that uh, I take an action. And again, I'm gonna go with the real easy do that thing. And I'm going to highlight it in red. I like to highlight my any actions that I take in a, in a meeting, any notes in red. That way, again, I, I like to have systems and, and structure of where I can easily at a glance see things. So I take some more notes, etc. What I will do from here is I will then email this page to myself and then I will create another invite in my calendar where I can attach the, uh, the note taking page that I've, I've taken. So I'm just gonna do that, I'll get that quickly set up and that way I can show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so I've sent that page to myself. What I wanna do is show you exactly how I, how I do this and how I keep track of my notes. So I will go into my uh, inbox here and I can open this and you will see that the note is attached to the, the email. I'll just open that and there you can see do that thing. I've highlighted in red, it's really easy to see. But what I like to do is if I will just Windows left arrow, let's see if that works for me. No, again, I have to press right for whatever reason. And then I will go over here and what I like to do is create a new invite next to the meeting itself. So one-on-one -on -one with, with Dave and George, I will then type in and call that notes. I'll open that up and then I will move that over to the right. I press Windows right, but it seems to go left for whatever reason. I think I uh, maybe just need to restart my computer. Anyway, let's have a look. So what I'll do is then I will drag that over like so. And again, I like to use a category. I like to give it a color so it's easy to see and understand. So I come up here to categorize and I turn it to green with the notes section there. And so then I'm just gonna dismiss this. I can now, at a glance, see, okay, I had that one-on-one, -on -one, Dave and George, and what, what was it that I discussed in that? Our memories are fallible, we're gonna forget things. I teach a course on unconscious bias, and the more that I teach it, the more I see how much we are driven by our unconscious thinking, and we forget a lot of things. That's why note-taking, I think, is, is really important. So I can, at a glance, really, really quickly see, oh, I took notes in that meeting, what was it? I can open my notes and I can again look at it and go, okay, 
well, what is it that I need to do? Uh, I took, uh, took a, an action to do that thing. So then I would then create a, another invite where I would say, do that thing, go into more detail. And again, I'm gonna turn that into red and categorize it. So then I can kind of work at it. Let's move on to the final kind of two tips which are linked. Uh, I wanna to talk to you about uh, Teams meetings and something I discovered recently. So let's just say I'm going to set up a meeting here and I'll call this meeting. I'll double click on this and open it. And then I'll click up here, Teams meeting. In my organization, and it depends on, on your organization, how things are set up, I was booking a meeting with someone the other day and they were, were watching my screen. And I went over here to Room Finder. And uh, in my organization, if you click on Room Finder, it will bring up all of the rooms that are available based on the times that you have specified. And I thought that was pretty cool. They weren't aware of it. And so I just thought I would share that. That's a real quick one. And the final tip that I wanted to show you was up here in Meeting Options. I have been taking handover from someone recently who's leaving the organization and they are showing me uh, how to use a system. And I don't know about you, but uh, when I get a 150 page technical manual, I would much rather meet with a person who has used the system for you know years and they're gonna teach me more in an hour than it would, uh, I personally think, than I would get from reading a 150 page uh, technical manual. That's just me. And so when I've been meeting with this person and doing multiple handover meetings, I've been recording the Teams uh, meetings that we've been having. And that way I have my notes on my iPad, I have the video recording, and I find it's a really good way to kind of keep, uh, keep across things and, and, and transfer that knowledge. So what I do is I go into that meeting options and I click on record automatically, and then click save. And then that way I don't have to remember to click on record when I'm starting the meeting. Something I discovered recently, and I'm not sure if this is uh, just a glitch on, on my end, but when I was, uh, and, it, and it kind of doesn't really make sense to me, let's just say I booked a meeting with three other people and for whatever reason I couldn't attend the meeting, but I had clicked uh, automatically record. What, we, what I discovered this week is that it won't record and it won't save to my OneDrive unless I'm actually in the meeting. So that's an interesting one that I discovered recently. I think it's something that Microsoft needs to fix, but I am just a small YouTuber. I doubt they're gonna listen to me, but uh, I would be interested to see if anyone has the similar experience that I had. So if you do use this functionality, you actually have to join the meeting in order for the recording to occur. It will be saved into your OneDrive. So that's really it in terms of the tips and, and tricks that I wanted to offer you in terms of how to be a bit more productive based on my own personal workflow. I hope that they are helpful for you. If you do use any of them or you have your own tips and tricks, make sure that you drop a line in the comment section below. And if you do feel this, vi this video has been valuable for you and you think it might help other people, please uh, you know, give it a like and share it with others. Thanks again for taking the time to watch and I hope you have a powerful day.